Well, hello. Welcome back to Peony Lore, where we help you to find the beauty in all things. So this is going to be the bi-weekly from September the 1st through the 15th, and today we are going to focus on the Earth signs. So we are going to do Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Hopefully everyone's August was great. Today is the 1st. Hopefully you were able to tap into the angelic guide detail that wanted to come through that were posted yesterday. Very weird way for me to do it. I haven't done it like that in a long time. But today we're getting back to the details of the astrology and the specific messages that are going to come up for you. So here we go. Taurus, you're going to be up first. Now, because we did the angelic uh, messages again, and I just follow instructions, guys. <laughs> um we are not going to start off with a sacred geometry card, but we are going to start off with the gateway um, just as a additional piece that you can use for this particular week. Okay, so these are kind of positive affirmations, um, but this is what wants to come through, so this is what we're going to do. And then we're going to use our steampunk tarot deck to lay out each of the days and talk about the astrology. We'll, of course, always use our white sage tarot to clarify, and then we will also use the oracle of the radiant sun, and if there's a different message pool that comes through with a different oracle set, then we'll go there, okay? All right, so this is Taurus, September 1st through the 15th. Here we go. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Oh, there we go. So it's this first one. Okay. So this one is talking about giving birth. I'm bringing forth new and dynamic energy into the world. I think the image is pretty cute. Okay. So new and dynamic energy into the world. Okay, so let's figure out what's going on for you this week. Let's go ahead and get these items laid down. Now, we actually have Taurus that shows up in the cosmos later in the month after the, um, after the full moon. Because you have the full moon in Taurus that shows up on the 25th. We got a lot of stuff that's going on towards the end of the month, so just so that you are aware, there's a lot of moon transits and other things going on with Taurus towards the end of the month. But let's go ahead and focus on these first couple of weeks. So, sun, moon, rising. This is what we got going on from the 1st to the 15th for you guys, okay? So let's go ahead. We're going to start one week at a time. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get our details ready for Taurus. So we have a universal three month with um, September and threes are all about expansion but they're all about um, catalyst moments as well so there is an opportunity for new things to be created so that you can expand it whether it's for yourself or whether it's for someone in your family um, whatever the case may be let's go ahead and get the messages down here push pull tug or toe that's what's going to be showing up here um, in the entire month of September. But let's go ahead and get down our first couple of cards. The first through the third really kind of belongs to Cancer. Um, so I thought about doing Cancer's reading first, but I was like, no, I want to go ahead and get this going here. They will be the next signs that I do. Let's just see how many we get done tonight. <laughs> um, but let us go ahead and see about that. And then the 4th through the 5th actually happen to belong to our Leos. Then we have the new moon in Virgo that shows up on the 6th. It's already Virgo season, so there is a new opportunity um, to put out some new moon wishes and things of that nature for Virgo. Of course, Virgo is very much about, you know, perfection of service. Um, and then on the 9th, we have a portal day. So we have an extra boost of energy with the moon and Pluto trining with um, Aquarius in uh, Saturn. Yeah, no, it's Jupiter. It's Jupiter, okay, on the 9th. Uh, then we have the Libra moon, which is probably one of the reasons why I really wanted to get into this first. Um, the Libra moon uh, transits into uh, a square with Pluto and Capricorn. So that could create a little bit of challenges for some people that day. So if you've got any of those signs in your chart, Taurus, then just be aware that those are some of the different um, aspects that you might need to play around with. Also on the 19th, the moon travels into the sign of Scorpio. And it also has a square. This square that happens is with... Um, 
Jupiter in Aquarius. So we've got Saturn in Aquarius and Jupiter in Aquarius, okay? And so both Jupiter and Saturn are both very much about expansion. Um, and, you know, when we have a square, there's an opposition that's there. And Pluto, the energy that comes up there, and I want to talk about that, is like the energy of the judgment card. It's about rebirth renewal and also second chances for a lot of different people so uh, take a look at what that might mean for you but on the 9-11 day that we have this year we actually have a great day um, later in the um, afternoon in the evening depending upon your time frame I'd say between 12 and 2 um, throughout um, really for additional work product to get done a lot of productivity and if that happens to be around some romance then there you go okay um, when we get down to the 12th through the 14th, the moon switches signs into Sagittarius, so be aware of that. And then um, on the 15th through the 16th, then the moon transitions into the sign of Capricorn. So let's go ahead and get the rest of the details down here. Thank you. So we've got the first, the second, and the third already here. Let's go ahead and get the rest of this week. That's me fat fingering. You know what I think I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move my ring perfect okay so the first uh, card that we have here on the first is the ace of cups on Tuesday uh, excuse me what's today today's Wednesday on Thursday <laughs> we have the seven of swords on Friday we have the high priestess interesting let me move my calendar over here so I don't mess up my days okay let's see where are we at woman where is my calendar yes so then what that means is Sunday the 5th, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. How about Saturday the 4th? <laughs> Sorry. Saturday the 4th for our Taurus. Saturday the 4th for our Taurus. We've got the Two of Swords in the reverse position. Let's see. Sunday the 5th. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. There it is. We have the Eight of Swords. Okay, so let's stop there so that we can take these one at a time. So again, today, September the 1st, we have the Ace of Cups. Awesome energy, you guys. So with Cancer in play right now, we are having an opportunity, and they're going to show up at the, at the back end of, of the month as well. But the Cancer energy is giving to us... Um, a little bit of nurturing I would say a little bit of nurturing so it shows up right on time with this eight of cups for you okay to uh, sorry Thursday <laughs> we have the seven of swords now the seven of swords means a couple of different things the seven of swords can indicate that there are um, areas that you're keeping close to the vest and sometimes that can be um, misconstrued as being sneaky um, it doesn't necessarily mean that in all aspects. It could also mean that someone in your energy is holding something close to the vest or are grabbing so many details um, or concepts for what it is that's most important to them um, in order to do something with it that they're not necessarily involving you. So that's where the whole sneaky concept comes from, but that's not necessarily a bad thing in my opinion because if you're trying to work on something, you may not want to uh, divulge all of your details at the same time, okay? So... <clears throat> Friday's energy though we have the energy of the high priestess we love we love we love the high priestess so we got Leo energy in play on that particular day so here's the thing about the high priestess the high priestess talks to us about um, a couple of different things that there's secret information that um, you're being beckoned to try to figure out Okay, may have something to do with this seven of swords along with that ace of cups because that's a gift from the universe that you're receiving it can also mean that you are really involved with trying to keep something together and you're almost at the point where you might want to be sharing content with someone, okay? There's more details that are going on behind the scenes. Therefore, when we get to our um, Thursday, what th Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, this is going to mess me up because I'm not doing it on the weekend, sorry. <laughs> Um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, <laughs> we have the two of swords in the reverse position. So what I'm getting out of this is that the high priestess has been sharing something with you and perhaps was getting you to make some decisions about something. Well, Saturday is the day that you do it. 
okay? Therefore, when we get to Sunday, we have this Eight of Swords. Now, I was hoping I was going to see this in the reverse position. I didn't. But what this means is if someone made a decision, then the decision that's being made at this particular moment has a lot to do with maybe second-guessing yourself about whatever this decision was that you had to make. And that's fine because sometimes it's like, okay, did I do the right thing? Here's the thing. The thing about the Eight of Swords is 100% in your mind. There's nobody doing anything to you. It's 100% you. And I get it. Sometimes you're thinking back and forth about a couple of different things. But the beautiful thing about the Eight of Swords is once you realize, hey, I made a decision because it was the right thing for me to do at the time, now I can kind of get myself out of that thought process and we can move forward in the way that we want to be able to move forward. Okay? So what I want to do now is I want to pull out the littles and I want to get deep into the issue for our Taurus. Okay, so let's start with today's energy of the first and let's dig into why this beautiful Ace of Cups is here. Not that we wouldn't want the Ace of Cups, but let's figure out what we've got going on. Ace of Cups, the beginning of something that's new as far as an emotional experience. Perhaps a cleansing, a clearing, um, a break of some sort has come to your attention. Maybe you have a couple of days off. We don't know these things, but it really is an indicative um, about just receiving just a refreshment. So that's the energy that we are showing here on the first. Let's go ahead and clarify that little guy. Give me some more information, please, universe, about this Ace of Cups for our Taurus here. Okay. We have the lovers in the reverse position. We have the world upright. Okay. We have a couple of different cards that want to speak. We have the Justice card in the reverse position, and we have the Knight of Wands in the sideways position. Okay, so there definitely is a decision that needs to be made, and Taurus, you've constantly got Libra in your charts for the past several weeks in a row, so I get the indication that you have Libra that is in your world, or potentially you've got Libra in your chart, but here's what we've got. We've got Gemini energy that shows up here with the lovers in reverse. We've got the world that's showing up upright. We've got Libra in the reverse position, but then we also have the Knight of Wands coming through. Now, it did show and face itself sideways. So here's what I've got going on here. The lovers can literally be a relationship. It can be a lover. It can be a best friend. It can be someone that you're very, very close to. With the lovers in the reverse position, it does indicate that there may have been some challenges in the past, maybe some miscommunication, maybe an argument, something like that. And there was just maybe some harsh words. That's the feeling that I'm getting here. Now, the world card that shows up here, okay, is really all about opportunities. And so Saturn is in play. So Saturn is here to say that you need to wrap something up here. You need to wrap up an opportunity. Maybe that opportunity is clearing something up with whoever that person was. Now, the fact that the Justice card shows up indicates, again, that it could be a Libra that you're dealing with, but what it does indicate is that something in that conversation or that situation was not really justified, okay? Therefore, the Knight of Wands is almost back, almost on his way to deliver a message um, and to come in really, really quick with something. And it's potential that there's an apology that's coming. But that's the energy that we get today here on the first. Now, what I can tell you is that uh, we do have, like I said, a lot of that Cancerian energy that comes through. That Cancerian energy, we do have a uh, Cancerian moon that shows up here on the first that actually has a square, okay, with Libra, all right? So the squares that we have when we talk about them, again, are opposition. There's something that's going on, right? And that square that's going on with Libra um, today here on the first has a little bit to do with our, uh, our friend Mercury. So there's communication, all right? Mercury is all about chat, 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 fast communication. Now, Mercury also happens to be the sign that we do have for, I'm sorry, that'd be Gemini. Um, I really want to bring Gemini into this. Why am I wanting to bring Gemini into this woman? Um, so Gemini is also third house communication. Okay, so that's that's where I'm going with that. So there's communication that's coming to us, whether you're male or female. 
you could be the person that is going to be delivering this and I feel very strongly that it's an apology it could be someone else that's on their way to deliver apology it's not all the way there yet but I would expect some more conversation to be happening before the end of the evening okay let's move on into September the 2nd September the 2nd what we have here is like I said our seven of swords there's a lot of bunch of stuff going on on this particular day there's a really juicy trine that's happening with Piscean energy and Neptune okay so Neptune is um, moon energy for sure and that does have a lot to do with secrets it has a lot to do with keeping um, content to yourself it does have a lot to do with emotionality it also has a lot to do with dreams and so again when the seven of swords shows up it's not necessarily about being sneaky but you're trying to hold on to something and so that's really the energy that's showing up again right on time for you tour so let's get a little bit of clarification on that one I realize I'm gonna have to adjust my camera so that you guys can see all of the different cards so I'll just do my best okay here seven of swords show me why the seven of swords is here for our Taurus this week outside of it being on right in alignment you got a lot of stuff going on that day Taurus what's going on specifically for you with um, cancer on this particular day as well there we go nine of wands yeah uh, is Uranus showing up okay Uranus Uranus depending upon how you learned how to pronounce it And uh, Uranus is the energy of the fool specifically. Okay, so on this day, okay, yeah, there we go. Yes, okay. So Uranus is the energy of the fool, wanting to start something new, um, you know, taking a leap of faith in a sense. Now that card didn't necessarily show up, but that's exactly what I'm getting here off, off of this card. It's showing up right on the day that it's supposed to. Mercury is still in Libra as far as communication. You've got Pluto um, that is doing a dance with Capricorn on this particular day. But with that whole, um, with that whole uh, energy of the Fool, here's what we've got. We have the nine of rods in the upright position. Okay, so what I'm gathering is is that that Fool really does have. Um, and has been blessed with this gift from the universe to say listen we've got another thing for you to do on this particular moment you're almost at the end point of having a challenging situation be put behind you which is why you were gifted this ace of cups this restoration in order to do something with it the six of cups shows up next to it okay six of cups the emotional energy for things that have gone on in the past as far as um, um, or presently trying to bring forth new um, emotional stability towards something that might have been a concern. It's very possible that you are connecting up with someone from your past. Um, the only other way I could read the Seven of Swords with that Six of Cups is is potentially might need to be on the on the lookout for someone that may not have been in your best and highest good in the past. However, you are going to be. Um, either dealing with or in the king of cups mode very very trustworthy um, as far as your particular energy um, or this other individual that's coming in you always need to be on the lookout but you don't always have to like be thinking somebody's doing something sneaky there could be something that's coming up from the past also that needs to be healed and it could have been anything to do with maybe what I feel is this little wonky communication that came through has an opportunity so you're being granted an opportunity to really step forward into this energy and own it you know what I mean okay nothing in the reverse position which I love we will go on next to our energy here of the high priestess when we get to Friday love me some high priestess so let's see what the high priestess has to say for all of our Taurus on Friday okay here we go <laughs> King of Pentacles in the reverse position can indicate you specifically or it can be another earth sign or it can indicate that there's something unstable that has been unstable that needs to be uncovered. Wow, that was super fast. Okay, so we have two cards. One, uh, we have the Queen of Wands in the upright position, very passionate. Um, um, uh, has a lot to do with entrepreneurial energy also has a lot to do with Phoenix rising from the ashes and in a sense in that 
She's gone through a lot of bunch of stuff, but she's battle she's battle worthy. She's the most badass queen. <laughs> she has gone through it, but she's very kind. She's very honest. She likes to go very fast. She knows what she wants, and she's not stopping um, at getting what it is that she wants. And she's also that really kind queen as well because she brings other people in to help support what's going on and doesn't necessarily necessarily have to be the one that's doing all of the work. She will bring everyone in, but it's very kind. It's very loving. It's very gentle, uh, but it's exactly on point, okay? Then what we have here is the hermit. So we've got Virgo energy here talking about the fact that there may be a need for you to go within a little bit and receive a little bit more kind of just internal um, information from the universe, and there's nothing wrong with that. Virgo indicates, especially when you're dealing with the um, high priestess, there's something that is trying to be shown to you at this particular minute. So if you can go in and you can meditate for just a few and really kind of get the information that's going, then there should definitely be a spark that's coming. Now, if this is you in the reverse position with as the king of pentacles, that's one thing. It means that you definitely are dealing with a fire sign um, individual potentially as well. So you could be dealing with an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, um, for sure, for sure, for sure. Or you could be dealing with someone that's an entrepreneur, or you could be dealing with a really strong female, um, whether you're male or female, it doesn't really make a difference, um, also in your world. But at the end of the day, the High Priestess is asking you to go in and just try to take a little bit of a break and make sure that you're receiving all of the messages and the content that are right for you. So, I feel that you're going to be receiving some information that you're going to have to be sharing um, when it comes to this two of swords that pops up on Saturday. You're going to be receiving a lot of information. So from the astrology perspective, Taurus, um, what we have a lot of is the sun in Virgo, okay, um, which also um, can be the hermit showing up here a lot of a lot of light showing on virgo on that particular day but it's um with the chiron and sorry i'll turn my phone off <laughs> air oh my god sorry about that guys it also has a lot to do with um uh, the whole chiron in aries so there is something that needs to be managed so that's what's pop that is exactly what is popping up on the time that it's supposed to be popping up here on friday okay so that indicates to me that the high priestess is really trying to get you to pay attention to something that you have to own because um chiron and aries is all about owning your stuff, right? So if you did something, if you said something, if you didn't do something, um, then this is an opportunity to really own it, and the hermit is going to help you on that particular moment to just kind of receive that gentle information that it is that you need to have. So that's really showing up right exactly where it is supposed to be. It will be an emotional day because the thing about it also is that we've got Pluto, okay, um, kind of hanging out with Capricorn at that that particular moment. So duty perseverance at its best um, uh, and then the only other thing is really shining the light on how much effort and energy you're putting into something right that whole devil energy that we come up with is there's something that you're associated or bonded with that really has nothing to do with you this is the time to go in and receive it own your business own your stuff and then you're going to be in a good position to get to this whole Saturday energy where we have this two of swords in the reverse position and you have made a decision and you are potentially going to be letting some things go you made a decision about something so again we still have uh, Chiron and Aries that is with you we still have um, Mercury and Libra trying to talk about things that are fair and just okay um, we also have again this expansive energy with Leo that's trying to do this this different opposition dance again with Chiron and Aries. So you've got to be able to um, own your emotional um, aspects about what that is. Your self-will is going to be really called into play here when the sun is in Leo on that particular day before it finishes its transit. And then again, it squares with Leo squares, opposes, okay, the whole energy that we have with... Um, uh, Pluto in your sign of Taurus. So you're really being asked to go within and figure it out. So the first couple of cards that clarify, wow, holy buckets. Yeah, you've got the universe on your side this day. What we have is, or they're really talking to you. So the two of swords, decision being made, receiving clarity between your head and your heart, having to make a decision and or seeing something that you may, you may not have seen before. It's a lot of faith in one sense when the two of swords shows up because 
there is a decision that needs to be made between your head and your heart, but there are other things that are going on behind her that she doesn't see because of the blindfold that's over her face. And if she would just take it off and take a look around, that might change her perspective just a little bit to be able to see what she needs to do. So perhaps you've done that. But what we do show, first card that validates is the temperance card in the reverse position. So that is Sagittarian energy. Even though Sagittarius doesn't really have a lot of play going on here on Saturday, that Sagittarian energy that shows up here, this is balance, this is temperance, this is talking about making some moderations. Now, with it being in the reverse position, there is the indication that there's still healing that's going on for you this particular week in one way, shape, fashion, or form. But you may not have come all the way out of it yet. You know what I mean? There's still some things that are going on. And I validate that because the emperor, self-will, Aries energy shows up in the reverse position. Almost there, but not all the way there. But at the end of the day, here comes your mama. We have Venus. We have the Empress that shows up right on time for you, Taurus, um, to support these different things that need to be able to happen for you. So what I can tell you this, though, is that also we've got the trine that happens with Mercury and Libra with that whole Saturn energy in Aquarius. So that will calm some things down a little bit later on for you towards the evening time. So you're going to be fine, it looks like, by the end of the day. Um, so if you can go in and you can be in that hermit mode as much as you can, um, when we get to Friday and just kind of really just relax, I would say if you have an opportunity to relax, you're going to be in a good spot. Okay, let us move forward now into the whole energy of Sunday with this Eight of Swords. Okay, again, eyeballs closed, <laughs> eyeballs covered, right? So the Eight of Swords, again, nobody is holding swords. No one's holding any swords. They're all above her, which means it's all mental energy, which means it's all in your thoughts. She can get up out of that chair or he can get up out of that chair. The gender doesn't really matter. Get up out of that chair anytime that you want, right? Stop second guessing yourself and move on with the things that you need to be able to move on to. So let's find out why the Eight of Swords is hanging out with Taurus on Sunday the 5th here. Um, <clears throat> we do still have Libra in play um, in a couple of different areas. Still a lot more communication going on with Libra. We um, don't have a lot of different transits going on with your sign, specifically Taurus. But we do have the clarity of the moon entering into Virgo on Sunday. So it's perhaps between you know, Thursday through Sunday, then you're really getting the clarification that you need. And then by that time, you'll be able to make a change here. Okay? Um, the only other square that's coming up that I think is going to be significant for you, Taurus, is, again, it's that Mercury Libra, so it's that communication about balance, right, and justice, and what and what needs to be called out and corrected, um, is that square with Pluto in Capricorn for you on that day. So, you know, again, Pluto's about judgment, and Capricorn's about duty and perseverance, and sometimes holding on to something a little bit too difficult, a little bit too hard, a little bit too... A little too much going on with it, so a little bit, you know. Um, I really feel that the universe is trying to tell you that whatever was going on, you just need to let it go. But let's go ahead and clarify this, okay? All right, yep, two of pentacles in the reverse position. you got to drop something because something no longer belongs to you. Something that is out of balance 100%, so you got to let that go, okay? <clears throat> Five of swords shows up in the upright position so if you have to have an argument with someone you probably will win but at what cost how much energy do you really want to put into the situation you know what I mean um, what I always say is defend yourself okay defend yourself but again how how much energy do you want to be able to put into something if you really had to so this is conflict that's been going on but this is outside influences not necessarily internal internal would be more five of wands this is five of swords so this is other people chatting in your ear about different types of things okay let's see what else we've got oh we've got two that jumped out all right so we're going to take those so yeah oh we have three i beg your pardon mm okay well here we go absolutely so, we have the King of Wands that shows up here. So now we have the pair. We have the couple that showed up. The King of Wands, okay, fire sign potentially, um, who matches up with the, where did she go? Yeah, with the Queen of Wands. So you do definitely have your power, power couple that's here, okay? Um, I'm going to go back and read this a different way because I am receiving some more information. But here's what's going on. If you can get through this conversation, the tower in the reverse position is kind of saying that you are going to be avoiding a big situation if you can kind of pony up, 
figure out what it is that you need to do because the queen of cups now shows up in the reverse position okay so you have an opposition between the king of cups and the queen of cups throughout this week by the end of the week if you can manage this this is the universe's way of saying hey this is our heads up toy Jeff. you can fix this and you're going to be in a great position the queen of cups is someone that's completely out of her element extremely emotional um, not able to be involved in a deep conversation because of how deep those emotions are going so really what I'm getting is Taurus when it comes to Sunday again you've already had to drop something that wasn't working for you with this two of pentacles in the reverse position you can be the master of this argument that shows up with this five of swords you have to be the master of this energy now the king of wands energy that comes in so let's talk about the difference between the king and the queens i know you guys know this because i talk about it all the time but the queens are usually about the manifestation component if it's not a specific individual where the kings are about the realization the physical on the earth um, manifestation of what was coming so the queens are dreaming it into existence and birthing this new process giving birth and you can be the queen as well, okay, in the manifestation process. The king is saying, yes, now it's here, okay? So if you can avoid, and I think this is why these extra ones came out, you're being given the opportunity to be the king in this scenario, have it all together, say what you need to say, and Mars is giving you the heads up to say, hey, can you kind of, you know, bring it down a little bit? Again, at what cost are you willing to put that much energy into the argument? Okay. So, I'm going to move these up, and then I'm going to go on to the next week. So, we're going to be looking at the uh, 6th through uh, the 12th first. Okie Okay. All right, universe. Let's get a card from the 6th. Thank you. The 7th. Whoa, that was super fast. Oh, I like that. Okay, good. The eighth. Nope. The eighth. Okay. The ninth. Tenth. Mm. Eleventh and the twelfth. Okay. So, what we have here is the Five of Cups in the reverse position on Monday. That is definitely healing from a ch an emotional situation that was going on um, prior to. It has come to the realization that it wasn't necessarily worth trying to spend too much time on the three cups that were spent in the uh, spilled in the reverse position. This is a really great card. So whatever conversation, situation, or healing that had to come through from the previous week is well underway, and that's a really good sign. Therefore, when you get to the seventh energy um, you're back into your full swing as the king of pentacles okay we like that remember we started off with the where did he go where did he go yeah the high priestess was revealing something to you the previous week as the king of pentacles so um, as the king of pentacles you are back in your full glory now, when we get to the energy of Wednesday, we do have the Two of Cups that shows up in the reverse position. Okay, we will talk about that. But then when we get to Thursday, we have the King of Cups in the upright again. All right. When we get to uh, Friday's energy, we have the Five of wands so this is the only one out of everything that I'm seeing that really kind of concerns me just a little bit um, Saturday's energy is the ace of swords lovely and then Sunday's energy turns out to be the ten of wands so by the end of next weekend you have gone through what I see as a correction or a clarification and you're moving forward with something else but let's go ahead and dig into all these details again five of cups on Monday is saying that you have come out of a uh, 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 very much into a healing energy now what do we know about Monday <laughs> 
Monday, one of the reasons why is that it's Labor Day. So there's an opportunity for you to kind of come out and do some celebrating with other people if you're into that in your state, in your town, and you're into like making sure that you're around groups of people. Um, but we also have the new moon that's coming in on this particular day as well. So let's get over spilt milk and let's bring in some new energy, right? Let's see. Let me get on my calendar here, make sure that I've got everything else. Yeah, so we have the new moon um, in Virgo on the 6th, and that one energy will really be there through a Wednesday. But let's start with this whole Five of Cups energy and see what else we can get here, okay? Taurus, on the 6th of September, please. Thank you. Page of Wands. So there's information that's on its way towards you, okay? Information you needed perhaps from the past. Page of Cups in the reverse position, okay? And we have the Six of Wands in the reverse position. I'm gonna take one more card on that. Okay, ha, wishing on a star. So you've got the new moon opportunity here with the Aquarius energy coming in to really help you kind of correct. So here's what I get for you on this Monday, right? We're getting over spilt milk, for sure, for sure, for sure. There's healing, actively healing. So what I'm getting here is that you may be expecting an apology from somebody else to come through. <laughs> And you're not going to get it. <laughs> um, and that just may be that other individual that was involved in the conversation from the previous week, um, not ready to, to do that. However, the Aquarius energy that's coming through the star card, whether it's you or them, is going to be bringing a little bit of healing. Um, and, I, and it's two people, two energies into this particular situation, okay? Because this Page of Cups... Um, definitely was not going in the right direction with whatever their communication was. That is why I'm getting two people um, consistently throughout this. That's exactly what I'm feeling. So you may not be expecting the message to come through from this other individual, but um, again, the Aquarius energy of the star is here to provide additional healing and to ask you to utilize the energy of the, of the new moon on Monday to bring in anything else that you need at that particular moment. Okay, so that's really, really good. Therefore, when you get to Tuesday's energy, you are back in the saddle again, baby. So this is a lot of Virgo energy that's coming through, again, the perfection of service. Now, here's the juicy thing about what happens on the Tuesday energy. The moon is in Virgo, and it's got a trine, which is really beautiful energy with now that Pluto and Capricorn. So it's going to be a good day because there's a... a, 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 a how do I want to say this? a freshening of the balance between what Pluto wants to do, what Capricorn wants to do. And here's the best thing about Capricorn, right? Their duty and, perse and, and perseverance, which means they're hungry to get things done, right? And Pluto is also about that judgment and second chances. So when it does its little dance with that trine, it really is trying to merge in with what the perfection of service wants to be with that moon energy in Virgo, okay? All right, so let's see what else we can bring out for our tour. Thank you. These are very, very fast today because I guess I'm talking too much. <laughs> so we have the two of cups that shows up in the reverse position. So this was past energy for sure from that previous week, okay? And it's going to lead into what's going to show up on that next, on this next day. There's judgment. There's judgment that shows up for you. Pluto is here, okay? If you are dealing with someone else, this could be the day that this individual also realizes um, their, um, what it is that they had to bring to the table in this conversation if it hasn't already been squashed, okay? Second opportunities. Yes, here we go. There's the clarity that is needed in this particular situation. So thoughts being completely clear on this particular day. Communication as well is going to be very, very strong. So if you have anything else to say towards an individual where there was this mishmash of energies when it came to something emotional from previous weeks, then you're going to be in a good position to say to what it is that you need to say. Now it is possible though that if you are dealing and you're coupled up, um, this, this 
whoever this other individual is, like I said, may see the light themselves and they could be the individual that brings for, um, forward the clarity for what it is that you need because you are looking good. You are upright. You are right in the position for where it is that you need to be. So I like that energy very, very much for you. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to the energy of Wednesday. So we still have the moon. Um, the moon switches into Libra on Wednesday. Okay. And the moon switching into Libra, there's a juicy trine that happens with that whole Saturn in Aquarius as well. So a lot of communication that's going to happen. Now again, when the Two of Cups shows up in the reverse position, this is just another way of saying there could be a little bit of a challenge when it comes to communication with a couple of different people. And that pretty much shows that that potential is there. Okay, well, let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Woo, that one wanted to jump. Okay. So the Knight of Swords comes into the reverse position, okay? So not receiving uh, the message, nothing being delivered on that particular day on Wednesday. Um, it's potential that, again, you keep getting the justice, you keep getting Libra energy. So if you do have someone that's a Libra in your world, then, you know, this person may have something to do with what's going on here. We've got the sun that shows up in the reverse position, Leo energy in the reverse, and, but we do have the Queen of Swords, and we do have the Magician card that shows up here. <sighs> okay, woman, here we go. <laughs> this is Juicy Taurus. Okay, give me half a second to pull all these details together and take a look at it. <clears throat> Definitely two people um, here in the situation. Okay. <clears throat> I don't think Mars is in play on this particular day at all. It's more Chiron and Aries. It's still uh, the moon in Libra is going to be all about justice. And we do still have Pluto and Capricorn, but we do have um, an opposition with that. Yeah. Okay. So this is all about Libra in opposition to Libra <laughs> on Wednesday. So let's talk about justice and fairness. And we're talking about that communication with, um, with that whole Mercury. So it's possible that Libra that you're dealing with, or if you've got Libra in your chart, okay, if this just happens to be a single energy, is just got this little confliction going on with a little bit too much of this, <laughs> a little bit too much communication, a little bit too much in their head. Um, air signs have the opportunity, especially Libra, I can say that because I'm a Libra sun, have the ability to overanalyze things to the point where it's just... I need to go lay down, kind of like, you know what I mean? So that I feel is, is kind of what's going on here. I do feel with the Queen of Swords showing up, that is definitely indicative of um, a Libra for sure. Now with the Sun in the reverse position, it just means I feel exactly that, that this individual has a lot of different energy. If it's not you, the Magician does show up here to say that there is an opportunity on this day to deliver, create, manifest, anything else that's needed. And so if messaging wasn't coming from you or this other individual in the past, there is an opportunity to clean it up but that's a lot of Libra energy that's showing up on this particular day which can create a little bit of internal conflict because it's like you got the great idea but you keep going 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 so it's like they're having their own conversation with their self and they're not really involving you on this particular day Taurus of course it doesn't have to be a Libra but it could definitely be another air sign okay Aquarius or Gemini for sure for sure for sure so with the sun in the reverse position, even though it's the happiest card in the deck and it's hanging out next to the magician, the only thing that I would say is make sure that you're manifesting enough time um, in this day for yourself or other individuals that could be another air sign for you. Um, otherwise, the sun in the reverse just means that there's a little bit of um, burnout, like you're doing too much, like you're burning both ends uh, of the candle at the same time. Moving forward, let us hit this Thursday energy with the King of Cups, okay? So on Thursday, again, it's a lot of Libra energy. The Libra energy with Moon is getting ready to square. Again, this whole Pluto um, and Capricorn situation. But then there's a trine that happens now with our friend Jupiter. So what happens is this expansive juicy um, energy kind of comes in and it kind of calms a couple of different things down. Now, also on 9-9, which is this Thursday, is a portal day. So this is another opportunity. It's going to be a really, really good day. It is another opportunity to call in some juicy things that you might need to have towards yourself um, and find a little bit of emotional release at this particular moment. So let's go ahead and pull a couple of different cards. Groups, 
Um, this King of Cups that comes through could be working in your favor if you're looking for a promotion, um, if you're looking for or have the opportunity to have been involved with being seen for a presentation. Whatever the case may be, you're going to have your collective poop in a group on this particular day, and you are going to be in a really great position, especially emotionally. Very kind. You're going to be able to say what you need to say, or you could be dealing with um, someone else that's going to come in like this. Very kind, very trustworthy energy, for sure, for sure, for sure. Now let's see what else we can pull out on this 9-9 portal day for our Taurus. <sighs> the energy that pops up with Taurus very specifically on this day is the Moon and Libra, which is just, again, it's got that whole placement with where um, uh, uh, Uranus is showing up, okay? That full energy, that starting of something new, which, again, which is where that whole promotion or, you know, seeing something come together um, on this particular day. Let's see what else we got. Okay. Well... We got the devil in the reverse position, so Capricorn energy. This is the day where you get to drop something that you realize is no longer for you. Um, I love that. Hey, we have the two of swords that comes through. Yes, you are really, really in the spotlight. You've made the decision. You listened about. Uh, you listened to the high priestess about what was necessary. You got figured out with Libra, kind of jumping into your stuff a little bit, or working with them a little bit to bring the truth and the clarity of the situation. I'm gonna take one more on that because we got so much major arcana sitting there. What else do we need to know on the nine nine for our Taurus? There she is. Okay. So now we have the Page of Swords in the upright. There is a lot new, uh, a lot more clarity, strong decisions that are on their way. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Now the other card that wanted to flip over was the Three of Wands. The Three of Wands has a lot to do with seeing your ships come in. It also has a lot to do with that expansion. Again, if you're looking at trying to do something new, um, it can be... Um, related towards trying to work with someone it definitely is doing your part with spirit if you are trying to co-create with spirit on this particular day meeting them halfway letting them do their half once you put out what it is that you want to be able to have come through to you the other indicator that we get here is a timekeeper um i don't often bring that up with the three of wands it's more the three of swords for me but the three of wands is also indicating that there's some things that are getting ready to happen within three days three weeks or three months with this particular energy that's showing up the final way to read it is that there could be a third energy that's going to show up on this particular day that's going to be the expansive piece so you and two other individuals coming together on this particular day this page of swords could be talking about this new opportunity be, being the deliverer of this new energy that shows up here so all in all a really great day for you on um the ninth taurus awesome 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 move that little dude up so let's hit this friday and let's see what's going on with this five of wands energy on this friday like i said it's the only one that really kind of concerned me because it means a couple of different things to me what it means is that there's still some consideration with what's going on with mercury and libra and that whole balanced conversation that comes through with what's going on with you in um um in your uh you know, your Uranus moment, your full moment, you're wanting to step out, trying to do things. So a lot of the times the five of wands really just means internal conflict, like you're beating yourself up about those decisions and did I, didn't I, should I, shouldn't I, should I should have said this, I should, you know, that kind of information, but you don't really need to should on yourself at all. It You made your decision, it is what it is. It can also indicate that there could be some healthy competition. It can also indicate that there could be some external competition. So you have to be able to resonate with what is yours and leave the rest on this particular day, okay? But I do want to point out, though, if you're seeing if you're seeing this, the, these people are not actually hurting each other as much as it is that there's like a lot of pomp and circumstance if you're dealing with other individuals. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay, here we go. <coughs> Am I keeping the group? Okay. Keeping the group. So the first card that we have as validation is the Ten of Pentacles in the reverse position. So again, in the past, this may have had something to do with something that was creating or, or your stability. Something that had to do with your stability. Stability with home, work, could be relationship for sure, for sure, for sure. But here's where you get your spark back in. Okay, so I really feel that this is healthy competition that's going on here with this Ace of um, Wands that shows up another gift from the universe, a new spark 
right? A new spark, something new is on its way. So it's healthy competition because here's the queen of um, pentacles showing up here. So this is the manifestation of and promise of stability with whatever is coming or whatever it is that you've been calling into to the universe. This is this is the opportunity. The other thing potentially is is that you're dealing with a correction of a loss that would have happened in the past if that had something to do with finances, which may have been creating a little bit of conflict within your own self. But um, the Ace of Wands is here to spark you and to provide you with a new opportunity. Ha ha! Another ace, okay? We talked about this. This is the ace of swords that shows up again when we get to Saturday. Another juicy day. So 9-11 <clears throat> is a day uh, that you are going to be receiving a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of clarity. You want to know why? Because the moon switched over into the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio don't play. Um, Scorpio has things to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> Scorpio will cut you off in a quick minute. But... Here's the thing when you get the Ace of Swords. i got to tell people, you've got to be prepared to wield that sword. If it has energy in, uh, about dealing with someone else, you can really stab them to death or you can very gently just cut something out that needs to be dealt with. But it is a gift. So this is strength of communication and clarity that is here for you by the time you get to Saturday's energy. Let's see what else we have for Taurus here on the 11th. Whoa! All of them? Yes, ma'am. You got the Six of Swords in the, oops, sorry about that, in the upright position. So this is definitely coming out of a situation that was a painful um, type of a situation for you, whether it was mental or physical, it really doesn't matter. It's talking about forward momentum. It's talking about movement, movement forward. Then you got the Three of Pentacles in the upright position, stability. Here's the beginnings of the stability that we were talking about before. And you got the Six of Pentacles sitting on top of that. So whatever new job potential could be coming through for you conversation about what that looks like for a new job is going to be balanced um the three of pentacles and the six of pentacles together is talking about a really big gift so if it's a financial gift for you together with this six you got two sixes together that is an absolute balance the universe is saying again in between let's look at it 636 here okay that, that three of pentacles, whatever that pentacles represents for you, whether it's people, places, or again, building something different on your own, it is going to be a lot more financially stable than you are even giving it credit for, Taurus, okay? So I just want to let you know, this is like a badass day for you. The two sixes, man, okay? I know you had to go through some boo-boo at the front, <laughs> but you worked your way through it. Here we go on Sunday where we have the Ten of Wands in the reverse position. So the only Taurus placement that really happens to show up is Chiron. No, I'm sorry. We only have Chiron and Aries, but where this comes into place is because there's a trine with that whole Sagittarius, that fire energy that we have coming in here, right? So now you've got the spark. And now you understand what it is that you're doing, and now you're like all ready to go. So that fire energy is letting you know, absolutely, I've delivered, I've done all the things that I needed to do. This, you know, light lit at the end of her last wand that's here is indicating that there is something beautiful on the other end of her delivering those last pieces. So I am so excited to see this for you, Taurus. Let's go ahead and see what else we got going on. All right. All right, all right, all right. Scorpio challenging Scorpio itself on the 12th, getting down to brass tacks, letting go of things. Scorpio energy is the energy of the death card, but it didn't represent itself here. It's But it's getting down to brass tacks. It's like, I'm done. You know what I mean? This is the finish. finish. This is the last of the last of the last. Yes, we got the seven of swords finally in the reverse position, which means... You were able to manage what was in your hands, what was on your heart, what it is that you needed to be able to do at that particular moment. Um, that was an energy that you released somewhere up in this particular week here, okay? And now we got the hair font. Yes, queen or king. Now you are back up, all, all up, all in. You have learned a lesson. You have graduated up potentially spiritually to another level by letting other things happen the way that they needed to pop out. It, um, it, and it indicates that um, you had the keys the entire time and you did what you needed to do and you worked it out. Let's go ahead and get that last card here for the Ten of Wands. And we got it. This had a lot to do, your spiritual growth with this Five of Cups, this healing that needed to happen with those lost three cups for sure. They said take one more, so I will do that. Thank you. Okay. 
Yes. <laughs> they had a lot to do with you healing, which provided you with all these new options that are getting ready to show up. And finally, 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 look who shows up for you. Uranus shows up for you. The fool shows up for you. Okay? Now, Uranus, the last placement that's really kind of in there um, is really, I believe it's that whole Friday. Is it that Friday? It doesn't really matter, but the whole Uranus energy shows up. Now, this is, you get to start something new right on time, people. Right on time. Time. I love, I love, love, love. This is really, really, really good. Okay, what else do you guys want me to do, universe? Again, giving birth. And here's the mantra. I think this is why they wanted me to use this deck. I am bringing forth new and dynamic energy into the world. I am bringing in new and dynamic energy into the world. I am bringing forth new and dynamic energy into the world. And so it is. Yes, there's something that you want. There's something that you have to just kind of get through as far as conversation and challenges with other people, but you're definitely getting there and I love it. I'm here for that. We're going to take an energy of uh, um, Oracle of the Seven Energies real quick. Whoops, my bad. It wants, well, I'm just going to reshuffle it. Um, Son of a nutcracker. Woman, what is going on with you? Slow down. Okay. Taurus, thank you. Ah okay. Basically, here's your advice for this week, these next couple of weeks, Taurus. Wish upon that new moon star. Okay, wish upon that new moon star. Because you are going to be giving birth to something that you want. All right? Let the universe help you. Okay, so Taurus, this is what I have for you for the first um, couple of weeks here in September. Um, I realized I said I was going to do to the 15th, but I'm really not. I'm going to leave it here at the 12th because there's a lot of different things that are going to come up towards that mid-month. And I want to spend a, a little bit more time on the expansion of it. So I will do the 15th through the end of the month next week. Thank you so much for tuning into this. Hopefully you were able to get a lot of benefit out of this particular reading. If you did, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up. Um, like, share, comment are the easiest ways to help my little tiny but mighty channel grow. It's all here for you guys. Um, otherwise, if you're looking for some personal support with anything that's going on, I am a healer. I am a medium. You can take a look at all the details in the description box below. And Dash and I will say to you, have a really, really great first couple of weeks, Taurus, and we will talk to you soon. Many blessings. Bye for now.